Welcome to the third and final part in our series on how to storytell Blood on the Clock Tower. We've shown you how to set up your grimoire. We've shown you how to run the night phase. But after the night, always comes the day. So you've just run the night phase, and now your players are awake and staring at you with big horrible eyes wondering what comes next. If it's the first day, put on a bit of a show. Introduce the town of Ravenswood Bluff. Introduce yourself as their storyteller, and then release them to discuss what they know. Be sure to tell people roughly how long until you open nominations. Then just sit back and let the players talk, hold their private chats, come to you for clarification if they need. Relax. You've sown the seeds of chaos, now watch them flower. But do remember that some powers activate during the day. Roles like the Virgin, who immediately causes the execution of the first person who nominated them, or the Slayer, who can take a shot and if they accurately guess the demon, instantly kill them. Remember that drunk or poisoned players cannot affect the game state for the players. A drunk Virgin can never cause an execution. A poisoned Slayer can never kill the demon. Also remember that evil players might bluff as a character with a daytime power. If you know one of your players is lying about their role, make sure you act as if that person actually did have that role. Go through the storytelling process of announcing that a slayer has taken their shot before announcing that it didn't work. Same as you would for a drunk or poisoned slayer. Congratulations. You've just caused confusion. Great job. After everyone's had their chance to talk, open nominations by announcing Nominations are now open. Now is the time when the town can destroy itself from within in their attempts to kill the demon. When players nominate each other by saying, I nominate so-and-so, announce loudly who's been nominated and by whom. Let all players freely talk and give time for the nominated player to speak too. If you want, you can help the conversation along by directing the accuser to speak their mind, directing the defendant to speak their mind, and allowing the group to share their opinions on the nomination. But remember, you're the storyteller and you're in charge. You're a host. A good host knows when to sit back and let the conversation flow and when to step in because people are about to start throwing volivants. To run a vote, point your arm to the nominated player and announce how many votes are required for the vote to pass, which will be at least half of the currently alive players rounded up. For example, if six players are still alive, three are needed for a vote to pass. If five players are still alive, you round up from half, so three votes would still be needed. Then say in a loud and proud voice, something along the lines of, the vote is starting now, so that the players know that the vote is starting now. And starting with the nominated player, move your hand around the circle clockwise, counting the number of votes out loud as they come in and disregarding votes that happen too late. Too late, Brooke! And remember, the accused player gets the final vote on themselves. When the vote is over, announce its success or failure, then open the floor for any further nominations. Remember, even though someone might be about to die, if another vote occurs and someone else gets more votes because only one player can be executed a day, that second player will be executed instead. In the case of a tie, no one is executed. If no more nominations occur, announce you'll close the day, counting down three, two, one. Then announce any players who are about to die as dead and tell everyone to go to sleep for the next night. When a player dies, be it at night or executed during the day, remember to use one of these little plastic shrouds that come with the game and pop it over their token to remind you that they are no more. They rest in peace. Head over to your town square board and flip their life token to the dark side before popping a single vote token on top. Or get your players to do it themselves, the lazy sods. This is to remind you that while the player is dead, they still have a single ghost vote remaining. And remember, dead players don't have a power anymore, so don't wake them up at night. At the start of each day, announce which player, if any, was killed in the night. Let the players know how many players are left alive and let the day proceed as normal with nominations, executions, nights and days happening in order until either the good players kill the demon, in which case announce that good has won, or until the town has whittled down to only evil players or one good player and the demon, in which case announce that evil has won. 
Remember to be a good host. Let them know if they reach the final day, with only three players left alive, that they need to kill the demon or else. Make sure your players know that if they ever have any questions about their power, about the game, about something that's happened in the day or night that they need clarification on, they can come to you. You're all powerful, you're all knowing and you're available for use. But, and this is the final thing to remember, everyone makes mistakes, even you. A storyteller has a lot on their plate and sometimes mistakes can happen. Maybe you gave the wrong information in the night. Maybe there are too many outsiders in the game. The point is, most mistakes can be fixed. If you can do so by taking the affected player to one side, do so. If it's something that affects everyone, announce that you've made an error somewhere in the setup, but don't tell them what. It'll be an extra little puzzle for them to solve. Fun. But also, don't worry. It's going to be okay. Unless it isn't. <laughs> and that's all you need to know to get started as a storyteller. Go out there and tear your friendship group apart. Good luck and have fun playing Blood on the Clock Tower.